be true independence or democracy unless women's voices are heard. There can never be true democracy unless women are given the opportunity to take responsibility for their own lives. These were the words of Hillary Clinton. And this afternoon on Youth Empowerment Television Show, my guest and I will be looking into the topic, women or female in SRC positions, what it means for the future. This afternoon, I want to hear your expert view on this topic. So kindly share them with me on 053-1320-444. I have two beautiful ladies who are already seated in the studios who will help me do justice to this topic. Let me introduce you to them so that when we go for a break and come back, we'll start the conversation. Today I have Nanaya Jesse. She's a commercial writer and Mercy Obaya Boache. She's a student of University of Ghana. And remember that we are streaming live on our Facebook page at Youth Empowerment TV Show. So join us through there and also leave your thoughts in the comment section so that I read them as the show goes on. Let me take this quick turnaround. When I come, these beautiful ladies will help me do justice to the topic. Stay. from that quick montage break so let's not waste time let's get into the conversation ladies you're welcome Thank you. okay i believe you're both doing well yeah i am i'm good okay nana yeah i'm also good okay how are you surviving in this our uh, rickety economy or you people the way you are shining this <laughs> afternoon it's like everywhere is good for you everything is all good for you the way people are complaining about the economy it doesn't seem to affect you the economy is, is we are in trying times but we are mm. hoping Mm. I mean, we are coping. So okay. It's fine. It's not like you have any other choice. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> you have, you have no option. Yeah, that's yeah. the same for you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Be before we get into the conversation, there's something that has been sitting on my heart. I don't know. Should I call it I want to vent? Should I say I want to rant? Yeah. You know, I, God, it breaks my heart and I find it a little bit disappointing. Because some few weeks ago, we um, organized or we held a national debate, presidential debate here for Nukes. Nukes presidential debate, we held it here on Youth Empowerment Television Show. And then last two weeks, too, we were supposed to um, hold a, president, a presidential debate for USA. Unfortunately, it didn't come on because of some reasons that were beyond us. And let me extend my sincerest apology to the um, young candidate who came all the way from Sunyani or Ezek Kumase to this place and then the debates couldn't hold my sincerest apology to you gentlemen what i found um amongst these two debates was that there were no female contenders mm -hmm. there was not even one single female i am disappointed because in 2019 ohima is it ohima Bediako? yes she she took the bold step and then went into the competition and contended the men three men even though she didn't win but i believe she paved a way for other women to believe that we can do it but uh, it breaks my heart that we are just not doing it we are not i feel like we are not making the effort nanaya let me find out from you have you tried or have you vied for any position whether src position secretary don't they even include secretary they get these like dab for women they don't even include it ah, lots of people. okay <laughs> Have you vied for any position? Yes. Okay, what position did you vie for? That was for? in my whole Africa Hall General Secretary and my society, KUST okay. DB Society General Secretary. Okay, okay. Messi, what about well, you? No, I'm going to live with 200 right now, so I'm looking forward to taking the step in acquiring more um, positions. But right now, I've never held any position. Not even class rep? No. Wow. Well, okay, let me announce that we will speak on phone with Miss Yvonne Ose Adobia. She is the first female SRC president for Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Since its inception, it has taken 71 long years 
for a female to ascend that throne. Seven to one long years for uh, someone, so, so, a woman to be able to get into that position. And kudos to her. Good afternoon to her wherever she is, if she's watching us. We'll be speaking to her um, during the conversation or as the show goes on. But ladies, you vied for a position and you have an intention mm. to vie for the position. What would you say is your experience in the whole process? What was your experience? Would you want to vie for any position again, even aside secretaryship? Yes, I would want to vie for a position again. Mm. I believe it's not just about the power you gain from the position. Okay. It's a whole process in itself. And you, as a human institution, when yeah. you decide to venture into politics, you realize that you meet people. Even if you don't win at the end of the day, you're able mm. to build a certain network around yourself. You're able to learn. Personally, I was a very reserved person. I'm mm. still reserved though, but because I was vying for a position, I had to get out of that shell, that comfort zone of mine, mm. and be more open to people, be more mm. approachable to people, because mm. personally, it was very difficult for me, do you get me? And so people will probably think you are pretending because the normal you is not nice, mm. or it's not so approachable, mm. but all of a sudden, mm. we're from this yeah. side, how, how are you doing? But yeah. you know, it makes you much more of a people person. I feel like you're able to learn so much about yourself. Personally, I didn't think I'll be able to socialize with people as much as I was able to do when I was running for my election that was last year and even this year. Mm. And it's a, like a lifetime process. I really enjoyed the whole process, going room to room, talking to people, engaging with them. Sometimes I even forget that I'm actually running for a position and mm. I have fun talking to, I mean, the people at the hall. You seem to have had a seamless um, uh, process <laughs> that's that's a new story. That's very novel to me. No, I obviously encountered some challenges. Okay. Yeah, but I don't think those challenges were so much that I couldn't overcome it. Mm. Everyone over like engages challenges regardless of whatever you are vying for. And mine wasn't the position that was we we target as the male dominated yeah. position. So yeah. I probably didn't face a lot of stigmatization or name calling etc. Because I mean I was just running for secretary and when you mention the name secretary they're obvious. It's the picture woman. you see is a woman so with a glass yeah, yeah, with yeah, some yeah, glasses yeah. and you fit the position. So I wasn't I, I didn't face that aspect of people asking if you can really do it. I mm. didn't have that um, encounter. I think mm. I faced other challenges and I was able to deal with it yeah, mitigate it at mm. least like what challenges so for instance um the first challenge you you actually going to face when you're obviously running an election will probably be your resources so mm. you may regardless of the plan you you have drawn yeah i mean things may not go as planned and things yeah. may go south and you have to be able to put up with it the second thing is actually combining your academics with um the whole election process, process especially yeah. if you don't want to lose and mm. i'm someone when i'm doing something i'm very committed to it and i really care about it mm. you get me so certain parts of your life will obviously be affected if you are not very committed and disciplined to your personal timetable so mm -hmm. when i was running in second year i actually had to go to the school counseling center and have like a plan drafted for me for mm. me to follow because it was really taking a toll on me and i wasn't attending class because i'm like okay if I go to class, I'll miss grounds work. How am I going to feel grounds work? Mm -hmm. And my manager is like, why are you not there in the morning greeting them and saying good morning? And my hostel is at Brunei, even though I'm at campus, but mm -hmm. it's quite far a stretch from yeah. Brunei to Africa. Mm -hmm. And I have to wake up as early as 5.30, bath quickly. So my roommates became my alarm. She wake me up. It was very cumbersome. And, but I still had to mitigate my way and go through it. Mm. I ended up not running last year, but I decided to do it this year. Oh, okay. Okay, Messi, you have the intention. Have you heard the story? Are yeah. you prepared? Well, yeah, I'm ready for anything. But um, aside, aside from Nana Yaya's story, have you heard other people, you know, talk about what they go through to occupy certain positions, especially because they are women? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I think the current, the current general secretary for my school, Martha, it was a very tough one. Mm. I think since the general secretary position, they mostly, I don't know, but the picture they paint is for women. Yeah. There were lots of women in there. Mm. And I feel like because of that, there was pressure on her, even though most, I, I feel like she she got it because most, most people, most of the people around there were actually males and they were doing most of the work for her. But 
I, I feel like the pressure the pressure at her side was because um I feel like the pressure at her side was because um, if it, are you trying to say that if she didn't have male um should I say campaign males campaigning for her, she wouldn't have gotten the position. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, not not necessarily. But looking at the way it was yeah. it was it was mostly because of the meals, like as in the 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 idea that she she's a woman and mm -hmm. is it the school is dominated like it's mostly male operated mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. she had to sometimes you have to do I even saw a video of her doing that like joking around with meals just to so she had to keep a lot of meals yes, company yes, to be able yes, to yes, yes, okay, okay, she okay. she okay. had to get a lot of male friends to push ahead with it because mm -hmm. looking at it mostly it's the intention is that it's mostly male mm. yeah mm. i see i see but that's that's very unfortunate nanaya you were on KNUSD campus i want you to paint a picture for us how yvonne's election process went and then when she won what was the aura how did you feel because you were female and you've been in the school for almost three years isn't it yes and yes. you've experienced only male um male src president now there's a female there's a person who has y your your sexual reproduct your sexual reproductive system there's there's a person who looks like you who is like you who has occupied this position how was the feeling like personally for me i was actually happy that mm. a female had been able to amass this feat okay. but when you go on social media on that day mm. there, were, there were just like mixed feelings all over so people some were happy mm. and some were actually having a problem with the fact that a female is in power. So the question I even asked myself, I even posted on my WhatsApp was like, why are we trying to use gender as a metric for a position or mm. determining mm. her worth or determining the kind of um, work she can actually do? We shouldn't yeah. use gender as a metric to determine the work the person can do because yeah. and I, there was this post that really got me angry when the person was like, um, hostel prizes, what can she do about hostel prizes? What can she do about... Um, the fact that we don't have enough shuttles. And I replied, I was like, hey, young man, we've had previous presidents who were mules. None of them what did, did they anything do about, about hostel prices. Yeah. What we've been seeing is every day someone is writing a petition to gas hostels, to offline campus managers, and we don't see anything out, anything. So you mm. can't come and say she has to do something about it because even your your own gender has mm. not done anything mm. about it. And this guy came after me in my DM. So I hey. really deleted whatever I sent to him because he just came after me and it was like, it was getting out of hand. But yeah. it was a mixed feeling that day. But personally for me, I was very, very happy. And mm. I liked the all around my hall mm. when she came. You could see that the boys were genuinely happy that she had actually won the election mm. for whatever reason or whatever she told them she, that she was able to convince them, I don't yeah. know. But you could see from the boys' book, they were genuinely happy from the way they were shouting her name, screaming her name, and you were like, wow, this is a campaign that was really from the grassroots. Mm. Like, this is a connection with the people, yeah. not just with policies. This mm. is a family she has been able to build, and I'm very happy for her, wherever she is. Kudos. Mm. But don't you think there's a lot of pressure on her? Well, there is a lot of pressure, even from the day she won, from what I was just saying, the post people started, I mean, sharing on social media. Yeah. People are trying to use her gender as a metric that she probably she can't be able to perform. Mm. And that leads to more like we putting females now on a test. Mm -hmm. There are actually two problems, lack and test. The lack is actually obvious. We don't have so much females in SRC positions unless it's probably who come or general secretary. Yes. 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 <laughs> and, and the second which we have to be very passionate about is the test. So I feel like now is the time for us to be able to know if truly the women empowerment we are actually pushing for, when mm -hmm. we are to give women the platform, what then can, I, can they do? Mm -hmm. And if she's able to deliver, it just pushes the agenda better for the women pertaining to the whole women empowerment we've all been preaching about because mm -hmm. if you underperform it becomes very problematic when you're trying you've, to you've drawn a you've lowered the bar you've lowered the yes. bar it becomes very problematic yes. when you are trying to push for the equity agenda mm -hmm. and equality agenda yeah. and i mean the same gender is messing up it's, it becomes a very dicey agenda you're pushing mm -hmm. i really hope she will deliver i trust she will deliver definitely mm -hmm. Mm. You know, there's, there's one thing that, that bothers me. The fact that women always complain that certain decisions are made not in our favor necessarily. Even on our school campuses, um, in parliament, wherever we find ourselves. Because 
we have the male majority. In Parliament, the men are, are a lot. They are mm -hmm. more than the women. Wherever you find yourself, it looks as if the men are not afraid to, you know, vie for certain positions. But women always want to sit behind. Yet we still want certain things to change, um, certain decisions to be changed or to be geared towards our, our, our happiness or to, to be geared towards things that will make us comfortable. Classical example is our sanitary products being taxed. While erectile dysfunction medications are tax exempt, we always sit at home and then we complain. But we are always shying away from occupying such positions. M Messi, what do you think? What, what do you think makes women shy away from you know vying for for such posi positions, especially even SRC positions, course reps, like you know positions that will put us on on a certain level where we can. Um, speak or advocate for the things that we know we need. Why do we shy away from that? I feel like um, it's because of the conception that women are weak. Someone who try. Are we weak? We are not. Okay. We are not. Someone who try to come out and be like, you are a girl, what can you do? Mm. Even guys are not doing it, what can you do? Yeah. I feel like that idea alone. Let um, it, that idea alone yeah. brings them down. Some mm. it, it it will take a very very determined and strong woman yeah. to break defy all odds and then go out there. But if you get someone, and women are seen to be reserved and so like the least thing, and then their power comes down. Me, for instance, if I decide to do something, and then you come more like, what can you do? What can you do? People are not doing it. Even the meals are there. What can you do? It has to bring my spread down. Mm. So I feel like that's, that's what makes them shy away from. And they feel like since it has been something that is there, I feel like now is the conception they have mm. that if I go out there, people won't support me. There are a lot of meal, meals out there. Yeah. They, if, if I go out there, people won't support me. There are a lot of meals out there. What if I'm not able to do it? Mm. I feel like that's what... Like that's what makes some shell. Mm. Nanaya, you defied mm. odds and then you 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 went ahead <laughs> She's a to strong campaign. Woman, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why were you not detested? What 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 inspired you? Let me take it from there. What inspired you to run for the positions? Yeah. Basically, I had a I have a long term goal, so I have a goal of venturing into politics. Okay. I don't that's, know if I that's, that's very nice to hear. Yeah, I don't know if Extremely I nice to hear. <laughs> but it's not it's not basic, like the Ghanaian politics we do on I would say the national politics. Okay. I have an interest in international relations. So okay. I aspire to work with the UN and okay. probably be a UN general secretary one day. So, secretary still going <laughs> still going into the secretary. But, so I felt like I needed to build a community first yeah. and because I can't just start one day and say I want to be UN general secretary. Mm. How then do I build that community at the end of the day? So I told myself, Okay, let me not go in for Africa Hall General Secretary because mm. looking at Hall was small, I could combine that with my academics and even with that, I thought I could, but mm. I faced some challenges at mm. a point. And secondly, I realized that well, with finances, my name, my parents can cater for the expenses of Africa Hall. Looking at the population, so that wouldn't be a constraint on my parents. Mm. So looking at all these factors and realizing the fact that it's still geared towards my ambition, like my long term goals. Like, okay, mm. fine. The let me just go for Africa Hall General Secretary. Initially, I wanted to go for SRC General Secretary, but after speaking to my mom, I realized that probably the finances would have been a problem. So, mm. okay. Well, yeah. how much do you need to? Is that is that not students' politics? Yeah, student politics, but you need enough. Like, you need actually enough to push their. Like, agenda. how much? Uh, it depends on what you want to do. But you, you, you can't just run an agenda without money. You can't run a political campaign without money. You can't. Students' politics? Yes, you need money. I'm, when I was in first year, yeah. I witnessed in Africa, so one candidate, she was running for presidency. She yeah. actually did free braiding and nails. Free braiding? Yes, please. How many girls? As many as came to do their hair and came to do their nails. <laughs> wow. And she, when she was done, she did, I think, is it a punchy cup? So you can imagine. And then she didn't win. So the following year, she came back oh. and she came to do uh, the... I think last year we're having the 
what's it even called you connect your card the sim card registration to your you link it mm, to your ghana yeah, card she came yeah. to get a free registration for that as well and then free netflix logins uh, shower curtains <laughs> in the bathroom. What? Uh, but she won. She won last. Is that not vote buying or something? Because well, we we are trying to. We we always bashing the government and then. I don't the think it's vote buying. Mm. I don't so think. What is it I, I really, I, I don't think that it should be tagged as vote buying. I feel. I believe it's the dynamics of how the election is playing out or is going mm -hmm. for you to be able to do certain things and how the trend of elections in that environment you find yourself in so if the trend is okay the people would vote when you are this you go in for that if the trend is okay you have to affiliate yourself with a specific institution and then you are going to amass the vote yeah. then you do that because as a human institution yeah. so you do obviously what the human institution wants to to amass the burden of the yes, human amass institution those votes. and yeah. if your other opponent is doing a and you are not doing anything you are just sitting there folding your arms I mean, but shouldn't people be voted into positions because of the policies or because well, that's of the, the mistake, you know, mm -hmm. and not a majority of the students' populace, right? Actually, even listen to your po policies or know your policies at the end of the day. When I was running for secretary last year and I stopped, mm. I stopped and decided to help another candidate. I got a guy telling me he's voting for that candidate just because I helped him write his personal statements for. A scholarship application not because of my policies so imagine if i were running he's not even going to listen to my policies he doesn't even care about my policies another girl to told me they said that she's voting for me because i gave her a gown for her dormant pill and i'm like like you know so I'm like, so it's don't really sort of vote. an exchange, an exchange. So it's more of like, it's, it's yeah, like yeah. more so, yeah, more so. It's like when you build a relationship with the populace, do you understand? They feel much more connected to you. Well, that's my, that's what I've grasped from like my three years in K University. It's not really about your policies, because it's about policies. Then some people should not be occupying certain portfolios right now. Yeah, but a few. I'm not saying the entire populace. No, but but I find rhetoric. I find that a little bit disappointing because you know we are trying so hard, trying so hard to not walk the walk of our of our leaders, mm -hmm. of our predecessors. We are trying to carve a certain path for ourselves. We are trying to hash a certain nest for ourselves. But it looks as if we are walking into the same footsteps. Well, messy. Well, <laughs> I feel like that that was the. I but can't we change it? Can't we change, change the, the narrative? Yeah. We can. But the truth is, I personally don't believe policies win elections. Because someone can draft very cooking, brilliant policies yeah. that address pressing needs. And they're like, this is brilliant. And the person does not deliver, probably because the person doesn't want to deliver or circumstances didn't allow the person to deliver. Mm. So with policies, personally for me, even though I look at policies, I actually look at feasible policies. So how feasible is this policy? Like how feasible? So when people say they, are, they want to reduce hostel prices on campus, I'm like, huh? You want to reduce It's not your property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How is so imagine if it's my father who ha owns this hostel and he's yeah. going to take care of me. Yeah, totally he's going true. to reduce it because you from somewhere says, mm -hmm. like, it doesn't mm -hmm. work that way. Meanwhile, this is what is supporting your lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't work that So when people say, I'm like, how? Like, how? But there are actually other feasible ones you could actually work on. So probably maybe a flexible school fees payments plan for needy students. That sounds much more feasible. I'm likely to buy that uh, as compared to you're going to reduce hostel prices, which doesn't it's, mm. it's not possible mm. well it can't be but it's going to be very difficult mm. you can't just use eight months to convince yeah. Yeah. this pool of individuals that yeah. he's coming with well, making stuff. profits from their I buildings mean, you, you can't but i mean you can't and principally they actually justified to increase whatever they want to actually increase because these guys these individuals are capitalists and they have worked hard for their money mm -hmm. so if you are going to mm -hmm. if you are to go into principle on the principle of moral disease, they actually justify to yeah. increase as much yeah. as they want. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very difficult convincing them. So I feel such policies are not feasible, but others are actually feasible. Mm. And mm. when you look into that, you can know who to vote for. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's very interesting because, but, oh goodness. So then how would we even change our country? Because <laughs> if these are the people we are bringing up, 
how do we change? Then what? What is the future? What is the if, if this is if this is the grounds work? If this is what is happening <laughs> in our schools? Not every time. <laughs> no, but I, I have I have experienced elections in 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 school, and I, I understand what you, what you are talking about. I know exactly what you are talking about. So it, it makes me think: uh, Are we going to have different leaders? I doubt we can have different leaders. Mm. It boils down to the social orientation of that individual and how that individual has been engineered. Mm. So your environment could probably be A, and you have to, I mean, go with A in order to win. Yeah. But if you are an individual who wants to, I mean, self-improve and self-learn, so that yeah. means you read outside the box, mm. you are obviously not going to be the average individual in politics mm. because you've actually decided to read. Mm -hmm. and know things outside the box. When I was running last year once again, I think this year I didn't really take it personal. It was last year I took the Thin World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I have um, a friend who was helping me out, and he gave me a book. I've forgotten the title, though. He told me to read it. I never read it, though. But there were other books about politics that he told me to read, and I decided to read it. And it actually broadened my mind, and I realized that we're actually joking. Oh. Do you understand? But I can't, even though I had new perspectives and new ideas, I couldn't bring them on board because that's not what the people are used to. When you decide to do what is supposed to be done, you are attacked because, I mean, no one is doing that. So I only, and you are likely to lose if yeah. you are to lose such things. Mm -hmm. So you follow, you follow the yeah. no road, and then, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know about whatever you want at the end of the day. And it's quite problematic. I think it's about time we change the face of politics mm. and make it much more an intellectual space as compared to what we do in status school. And when mm. you even go to the market space, the we transcend it out to national politics. Yeah. When they are voting for these MPs and things, you realize I witnessed one where my they came to give money to my mom to give to the market women because they saw her as the elite woman amongst mm. the market because she has mm. a shop then they saw her as mm. elite and she took their money and she was like she should go and give it to who so she gave the money back to them and they brought it back to her and how they even distributed the money i was like wow they had to put 50 cds in the matches box mm. and they were giving it to them so it was women. true because this thing was circulating in the news and people were just debunking that it was false oh, it was, i actually witnessed that i was i think in jhs and i was like wow so 50 cds uh, are they really going to vote for the person? That's, that's, the, that's the thing. Be before I, I come to uh, Mercy and take your view on this, I, <laughs> it's sad. I, I watched one interview on TV, and this the, in this constituency that is dubbed MPP, the man was vehemently saying that even if, the, if they bring a bottle, <laughs> once, the pe once the bottle is an MPP person, Ooh. they'll vote for the, yeah. the bottle instead of any other it person. happens even on campus when you are affiliated to probably a particular hall or association. I don't know if yeah, about your on, place. On, on campus, yeah. I was as I was saying, the current elections, the recent election, mm. the general secretary, there was a runoff between one girl who was, I think, the NDC student something, and then the other one was in the NPP something. So it was divided. People were like, they would, they would be loyal to their political affiliation and then vote. So here they were not considering whether the person yeah, would be capable. Yeah, they were sticking to their political affiliations, and I, 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 I realized it wasn't a good thing to do. Actually, it wasn't a good thing to do. People, it was now between NPP and then NDC, because one was in NDC and then one was in NPP. So NPP was like, I'll vote for the NPP girl, NDC, I'll vote for the NDC girl. That was what happened during the runoff. I realized. And who won? Apparently. <laughs> I think yeah, the MPP girl. Let, let me let me let me send good afternoon to some female SRC presidents. The the are current these are current SRC presidents. This um Abdullah, I, I I'm sure I've spelled your name, Abdullah Swad. She is the SRC president of UDS Nyangpala campus and Fatima to Ali. She's the SRC president of Unimark IJ and Hussein Rukaya, she's the SRC president UDS. Tamale, Yvonne Osei Adobia, the first female SRC president of K and USD. And then let me send good afternoon to some past SRC presidents. Queensley Debbie, she's the former 
SRC president of King's University. And then Margaret Ajenimwa in Kansas, she's also a former SRC president of King's University. But have you realized that a lot of these females are Muslims? So why? What's the secret? I have another uh, Muslim coming, Zainab Mohammed, um, former SRC president of UDS. Bridget Bonnie, former SRC president of Wisconsin International University. And then I have Priscilla Kadi Ezevarura. She is a former SRC president of um, Simon Diodon Dombo University of Business and Integrated Development, SDD UBI DS WA campus. And then I have Lois Carol Sewa Donko. She is a former SRC president of University of Ghana. And I have a video that I want I want us to watch. So that when we come back, we'll talk about it quickly before we leave. So stay with us. Sako Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasako Springs, a premium master plan community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget, and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. And again, for her to arrogantly and ignorantly sit here and talk about the NDC not opening up for nominations, he didn't know what she was yeah, saying. Because my time now, so I was just throwing words out there. Has there ever been a time in the history of NDC internal elections that nominations haven't been open? Has there ever been that time that the MPP has said we don't want anybody to contest this particular person and that we are just going in for a declaration? We have always opened for nominations and the party. The grassroots and the party. So if you sit here and ignore, don't we see uh, presidential candidates issue threats to the president and the vice mm. because the person feels democracy hasn't really been uh, manifested as they want us to believe. Mm. Then you come and talk about democracy. Mm. And he, she was talking about the NDC should go and learn how to collect results. Were they able to collate their sin of results? Were they able to collate their sin of results? Oh. Was the MPP able to collate their sin of results? Did you see them putting out any results there? But you didn't have to see them. We didn't, but did they have to see them? How did they know we were not able to collate our results? Okay. Okay. Did they, did they collate their sin of results? Mm. Andy, let me land. Mm. And just this morning on TV3, Nano Hininto has stated clearly that. The NPP appointees mm. had to give out money, monies they didn't earn, to manipulate the elections for Dr. Baumia. Mm. So if I'm telling you that he has failed, despite all the manipulations and the machinations, if he has failed for getting 68 percent, you should know where I'm coming still from. still allegations. That's a former general secretary of the party. Yes. He's still making allegations. Yes, but you should know that. The, 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 the kind of allegations and where it's coming from. It's mm. not coming from mere grassroots people, mm. but party big wigs. Hosina Doe has also said that we should be worried as Ghanaians about the NPP, where they are getting their money from, their money from the IMF. We should be worried. 
because they, they, we had to start asking them to account for the IMF money after this whole election is over. Because they can't even believe how monies are being thrown around in their just the superdelegate conference. Mm. Please, they should spare us. We in the NDC are very democratic. Um, Eugene Echonelian says that, uh, good morning, Annie. I don't have much interest in the MPP and what they do. They can wear, they can wear the man to his death. What did you want to write? So I care not, but I do care about Ellen, and I admire her a lot. But please tell her she should tone down in her utterances. She seemed not to be on such... Uh, on a high, she seemed to be on a high horse these days. Thanks, Eugene. Thank you for the message. Um, Ellen, you have your last word before we. Let me say a big up. happy birthday to Honorable Titus Clover. Mm -hmm. Wish him Godspeed. I don't have much to say, but I'll borrow a line from Daddy Lumber's song. And I'll say it in Who's song? Daddy Lumber's song. And I'll say it in Fee. When you finish, can you give us. And let me finish saying it in Fee. In response to everything that she has said, be powerful in a cancer fool. That is all to I have it. to say. To which translate? To which who should translate? Whoever. No, Ellen, that, that's very, very rude. That is very rude. I'm done. Ellen, that's rude. You don't respect yourself, Ellen. You don't that is respect why I said yourself one bit. At your age, you sit on national television. Let, 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 let's, and let, let's, take a, let's take a break. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. You don't respect let me just uh, officially apologize for the final comments mm. or the, the rather very... Ah, so, ladies, my time is up. But what do you make of this video? This is, this is a woman <laughs> in politics. Is, is this the future that we want? What do you make of this video, Nanaya? Personally, I believe that was actually uncalled for mm. to sit on national television and give such a comment about someone. Uh, probably... Uh, she she has made an apology to the person we don't know yet, but it's something which is uncalled for, and we shouldn't be encouraging that. Mm. Mercy, what do you make of this? I feel like it's it was very very rude. Mm. It was looking at the way she just said it, and no explanation whatsoever, nothing. You say you say something, and then on national television, you say something, and you just leave it. It was very rude, and yeah, as Nanaya said, maybe she has apologized, but if not, the right thing to do is to apologize. Mm, okay. Let me just read this comment, then we can go. Bay Tarichi says, my baby, Obaya, looking nice. Uh, please, host, tell her she's doing great from Richie. So, Nanaya, Richie says you're doing okay. great. <laughs> okay. Ladies, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I think I had a great time um, speaking with two beautiful women. And I wish you all the best in your election. Are you still contesting this year? No, you are done. Okay. Let's have the president. Yeah, I'm in yeah. final year. Okay. You can't okay. run. Okay. Mm. Okay. That's 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 unfortunate. It's too late. But thank you so much for coming. I, I had a good too. afternoon, and I hope that we would have great women who would want to venture into politics to lead this country and then you know channel our grievances and then solve problems for us in our country let me also remind you that the voting process for the umb ghana tertiary award is still ongoing so please vote for your favorite nominee don't wait until it is too late i'll see you tomorrow take care bye bye